Hello friends, welcome to yet another intriguing edition of Rahul's Advanced Biology. Today I'll be talking about a very ecstatic topic known as COVID-19. Why DPP-4 inhibitors could be a good prospect? For the beginners, I would like to tell you that the COVID-19 disease which is caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus has already been termed a global pandemic by the World Health Organization. More than 2 million people have already been affected by it and more than 2 lakh people have already lost their lives. Scientists are really trying meticulously in order to come up with various drug regimens and various vaccine options too. In my previous videos, I have already talked about various drug regimens like hydroxychloroquine as a drug regimen, then chloroquine plus, azithromycin, remdesivir, tocilizumab as the drug regimens. In this video, I will be talking exclusively about the DPP-4 inhibitors which are currently available in the market used against diabetes. Now, what are DPP-4? DPP-4 stands for dipeptidyl peptidase 4. Also, it is known as adenosine deaminase complexing protein 2. Also, it is known, it is known as CD26, cluster of differentiation 26. Now, DPP-4 belongs to the serine exoprotease or exopeptidase, a type 2 membrane protein which cleaves at the end terminal end of the oligopeptides. Now, DPP-4 is also a homodimer and it needs to be glycosylated. It is expressed on various cells like the endothelium and the epithelium of various organs like lungs, kidneys, etc. And also on various immune cells like natural killer cells, dendritic cells, T cells, myeloid cells, etc. Now, in medical term, what happens is DPP-4 degrades incretins, which stimulate the synthesis or the upregulation of insulin. Incretins like GLP-1, glucagon-like peptide 1. Incretins like glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide. So by degrading these incretins, it down-regulates or it lowers the bioavailability of insulin. Thereby, it could also adversely affect the metabolism which is going on in the visceral adipose tissue. More than, this, more than that, what it can do is, it can also trigger pro-inflammatory response. Now the silation or the glycosylation that I talked about, meaning the addition of the glycosate or the glucose residue via the enzyme, different from glycation where glucose residues are added but not with the catalyzing effect of enzymes. Now glycosylation could be done by sialic acid. So various types of acids could be used or glucose residues could be used. Now sialic acid can be hyper or hypo. More sialic acid could be added or less sialic acid. So, in the resting T cells, it has been found that more silic acid is added, it is hypersilated. In the activated T cells, it has been found that hyposilation is prevalent. Now, hypersilation is associated with HIV, rheumatic arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, and other autoimmune disorders. But hyposilation, on the other hand, is also associated with lung cancer. Now, why DPP-4 inhibitors have been taken into account? Because scientists have already found out that in MERS, it's again a coronavirus, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, coronavirus. It used to attach to the DPP-4 and it also killed and affected people who were suffering from diabetes a lot. Same thing or the same trend is found here also. In case of SARS-CoV-2, mostly diabetic people are being affected more. So this is a theory, there was a commentary presented or published few days ago. The link to that commentary have been posted in the description section below. And it talks about if SARS-CoV-2 virus binds to DPP-4, which has to be evaluated and proven, then this could really open up an avenue because the diabetic patients are being affected more and by DPP-4 inhibition, we can attenuate or mitigate that problem because DPP-4 not only degrades the incretins, it has a lot of implications in the immune response. In thymus T cells, it is upregulated, thereby it causes the activation of the T cells. In case of DPP-4 engagement or DPP-4 activation, it can also activate the T cells, T cell activation, it can activate CD86. When DPP-4 receptor is engaged, it can also activate the nuclear factor Kappa-B pathway, NF-Kappa-B, which is again a pro-inflammatory pathway. 
and can cause cytokine storm, can cause cytokine damage, cytokine storm induced damage which has been observed in the SARS-CoV-2 COVID patients, COVID-19 patients. Thereby one could trigger DPP-4 and try to mitigate the cytokine storm mediated damage which occurs in the patient suffering from COVID-19. DPP-4 has also been seen or observed to be expressed in high amount in the TH helper, T helper 17 subtype cells, also in the mate T cells, mucosal associated invariant T cells. So there also DPP-4 is expressed in high amount at high levels. So a lot has to be known, a lot has to be discovered in research in order to come to a conclusion what is the real effect of DPP-4 in the immune cell, immune system, what is called response. But the DPP-4 inhibitors like viltagliptin, cetagliptin, saxagliptin which is used in diabetes has been found to attenuate those immune responses and has been found to have positive effect. So those specific inhibitors, analogs of incretin could be used in the diabetics who are suffering from COVID-19 in order to mitigate these kinds of cytokine response issues. So that's all the conceptual knowledge, the conceptual progress you needed to have in order to comprehend this very lecture. If you like the content, kindly hit the like button. And I have put the links of all the COVID-19 videos and my Facebook page too. Kindly like my Facebook page in the description box below. And you can directly contact me via messenger. I'll be replying as soon as possible. Never hesitate to post your queries in the comment section below. I'll be replying as soon as possible. And if you have liked the video, then kindly hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell so as to get notified whenever my next video comes online. Thanks a lot. See you soon.